Okay, so <clears throat> the case that I'm going to talk about uh, during my presentation is June Loop Pneumatic Tire Co. LTD versus Selfridge Co. LTD. That was in 1915. So <clears throat> the, the, the case consider, you know, uh, <clears throat> the issue of consideration and privity, you know, in contract. So the issue, so I use IRAC, you know, IRAC method to answer this, to analyze this. So the first thing that I was looking at is the issue. The issue here is uh, whether Junlop, you know, which is a manufacturer, could prevail in court by alleging that Selfridge sold the tires below the price that they agree upon. So, so basically you're looking at two parties that are involved in the contract. The first one is Junlop which is the plaintiff in this case. And uh, the second would be, uh, the second party in the contract is Junco. So the thing is the facts, in terms of facts, uh, we're looking at the plaintiff, which is Junlo. Junlo sought to establish and enforce a resale price, you know, maintenance. You know. The plaintiff, which is in this case uh, the manufacturer, Junlo, <clears throat> the plaintiff sold tires to Ju and Co, which is a tire dealer. You know, so this is two parties here involved in the contract, Junlo and the tire dealer, which is Ju and Co, which then sold to Selfridge, which is a third party, Selfridge, <clears throat> which is a, a customer, on condition that Selfridge would not sell below the lease price. So Selfridge failed to comply with the condition. Okay, he failed to comply the con with the condition. So the plaintiff sued for br breach of contract. Now the thing is, the health is that, so, so although the promise made by Selfridge to Jew which is the other party, the other party into in the contract. The, 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 although the promise made by Selfridge to Jew not to sell below the lease price had been made for the benefit of Janlop under you know this sort of agreement of price, Junlop was not entitled to enforce the contract against Selfridge because he was not a party to the contract. All right, so that means Selfridge is a third party, all right? So one other thing that I was also looking is that in terms of our rules, you know, I was looking at also case in three principles. So the first one is, uh, the, 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 you know, the court will argue as follows. You know, the first would be the privity of doctrine, where it says a party in a contract is the only is the only one allowed to sue, allowed to be sued, or allowed to be sued. So secondly will be the consideration doctrine, which upholds the fact that the third party to the contract can only enforce in case of considerations to the promiser, given from the promise. All right. So in conclusion, again, what I'm trying to say here is that Julop which is the plaintiff, could not prevail in the court by his allegation, okay, his allegations against Selfridge. This prevalence was only possibly in Don Junlop was, you know, Junlop, if was possibly, if Selfridge was a party of the contract. Okay, or was named or was named in the contract in any role involving the promise. So, what I'm trying to conclude in my conclusion is a uh, hand jewel case failed. Okay, hence his case failed. Uh, it is therefore vital, you know, it's very vital to document all business agreements with appropriate naming of all necessary 
agents. All right. So this is how significant it is. So, so it is important, you know, it is vital to document all business agreements. All right. So in future, it doesn't exist. There is uh, there is no room for issues like this. All right. Well, that was my case. Thank you very much for looking after this video. Okay, again, thank you.